Inside the engine, the precision-built, tight-fitting pistons slide up and down millions of times in a few months of driving. The engine generates enough heat to heat the average house, yet pistons and valves work perfectly with almost no attention. So I was going to put the manifolds onto the 216 for the 48 Chevy, just like that, and then put them on the block, but I have a bit of a problem with the exhaust manifold. On the exhaust manifold you have this valve, so for cold starting this valve is open and it goes through the heat riser of the intake and pre-warms the fuel mixture in the carburetor. And then as the engine warms up, you want this valve to close so that the, in, the exhaust is not continuously heating the mixture in a hot engine because that then becomes detrimental. This valve, or this spring, the bimetallic spring, is too stretched out. So I got to get that off of there and figure out what to do with it. This would be a common problem on practically any of these older cars. And getting a new spring might be a problem. So let's just see if I can get it off here without breaking it. There's a slot in this shaft and the inner end of the spring just slides right into there. There we go. So I got the spring off, but the very center of it where there's a almost a 90 degree bend, um, it was brittle at that bend and it just snapped off and was left in the in the split in the shaft here, which is what holds it. So I'm going to take a putty knife and try to spread this open and go up to a small screwdriver perhaps. Okay. I don't want to go too far and bend the shaft. Get another old screwdriver here. See if I can get that piece out. That has really seized up in there. Of course, it's done nothing but get hot its whole life. What I'm going to do is try to rotate this putty knife in there. Oops, sorry, didn't mean to hit you. really don't want to have to take the shaft out. That would require cutting welds on the flap. There. There's a broken piece. Okay, I've got a new thermostatic spring, new heat riser spring. Um, GM number is 838573. I bought this one from Chevs of the 40s. Um, I'm sure there's other resources out there. I'm going to slide the notch in the shaft right in the center there and then just twist it till it clips on. Simple as that. Now let's test it out and see what it works. So right now, it 
it's as if the engine is cold and it's letting exhaust hit the bottom of the intake manifold. And as I heat it, you'll see the spring collapse. And it wants to hold that valve shut. So it's like a uh, hot engine condition. And then if I cool it off with cold water, it snaps it back open as if it's a cold engine. Okay, let's get this going back together. Put our new exhaust or our manifold gasket on there. Slide our intake manifold on. We'll have a couple short bolts that go up in the bottom here. that and then a couple nuts that go on the top tighten these all down and then we'll take it to the vehicle Now these rings can come out, so you want to make sure you have the three rings in place and that you have two studs, one on each end. I'm going to slide our intake and exhaust gaskets over. Now we'll hang the manifold set on the two studs on the ends. Make sure the gaskets all stay in place. Okay.
I think we'll add on replacing the fuel pump while we're at it. May not be too exciting, pretty self-explanatory, but we'll do it anyway. This is the old pump that was on the car. It is not the correct style. I mean, it's a later, it's a later style. I'll show you in a minute what the replacement looks like. But I need these flare fittings off of here. This is actually a, a AC Delco part. May end up just collapsing the thing. There we go. It's just a little beat up. Okay. Clean these fittings up and then we'll put them in the new pump. Right there, AC. Okay, so here's the replacement pump. Gently put that in there. This is actually brand new item, AC Delco Part 429. This matches the original style. The only difference is the original style would have had this on top of it. And from what I have found, I, I haven't been able to find one that style. Um, so I'm going to put this on the, at the carburetor. That is also labeled AC. That is a GM restoration part 41-9360. We'll get into that more after I rebuild the carb and install it. would normally use the flare wrench but someone in the past has kind of messed this fitting up so a box end wrench doesn't go on it this one seems to work fine and the end is still pretty messed up regular box end I can get on there Okay, I am putting a small dab of grease on here. Normally I'd probably put assembly lube, but I've got it at work. Working on that 292. My gasket on there. Put that in there. You can feel spring tension against the camshaft when you get it in there. Line the bolt hole up on the gasket. And where's my bolt hole here? There we go. Come on, line up. And you.
hierarchy. All I do is leave the room for a few minutes, and what do I find? Confusion, disorder. And you, what were you doing? I was just going... Going to what? Okay, well... I don't know if you can tell, but the brass fitting, old brass fitting split right open right there. So, I'll have to replace that. Um, probably had something to do with why the... The wrench not fitting probably had something to do with that. That it was already spreading open. Um, I know I'm going to have to get a new steel line from here to the carburetor. And we also need to work on the gas tank. So complete fuel system overhaul basically. And uh, on we go. So I've got that fitting replaced, fuel line installed once again. Now I'm going to put the road draft tube in. I don't know if this needs to be explained. Um, when the engine warms up, things want to expand. Pressure is expanding inside the crankcase. If you didn't have some sort of ventilation for the crankcase, oil would want to blow by piston rings or blow out through the gaskets. This road draft tube simply let the expanding the uh, pressure out of the crankcase and shot it down at the road. So put that in and then go underneath and attach it to one of the pan bolts. How's that for a dramatic view? Alright. I can get my screwdriver on there though. 